The horrors of the deep dark don't just come in big packages. They also spit, curl, and leap at your faces attempting to murder it. Yes, today we shall talk about the wide variety of spiders that dwell in the caves and what they all bring to the table. But first, you'll have to know where to look. And you'll be looking for the stalagmite biome. Obviously, beaming with stalagmites. However, there are actually two types of these biomes, with the other featuring taller stalagmites and bats as the main attraction. But we want the one with the spiders, of course. But note that the spiders can spawn in and around mush tree forest biomes as well. They spawn from these, and these are spalagmites. Put simply, they are the cooler looking version of spider dens up above. But they only hold two to three spiders, and but two variants can come out of them. The first being, well, cave spiders. They have a shell that they curl up into upon taking damage, and that actually reduces the damage they take by 75%. Now, that sounds annoying, but they come out of it fairly quickly, and heck, there's nothing to stop you from just bashing them in the head while they're in that state anyway. And as for loot, expect it to be the same as every other spider in-game. Splagmites can actually be mined, and there's some interesting and noteworthy things there. For one, you'll receive some interesting loot in the form of fossils. More on these later. But also, spalagmites will actually lose their webbing after only two hits, which actually renders it spiderless forever. Next is the spitter. The thing that is currently beating the crap out of me. These guys have a 33% chance to spawn out of the spalagmites and are very unique when it comes to spooter variants as they are ranged. They shoot web-like projectiles and do so fairly quickly I might add. So dispatching them first while you're fighting a group of them is your best bet. Again, expect their dropped loot to be the same as any other spider around. Dangling Depth Dwellers are next, and that's just a fancy talk for the white-colored spiders. These guys are everywhere, from the same stalagmite biomes as the others, the mush tree biomes, the village biome in the outskirts of the ruins, but most prevalent in the Labyrinth, another ruins biome which we will hopefully cover in another guide soon. Walking around, you may see webbing on the floor with no den or spiders to be seen. This is their domain. If a player who isn't Weber were to step on these webbings, the dangling depth dwellers would drop down and attack whoever did it. These variants have a decent set of health at 4 hundo, and have leap attacks very similar to the warrior spiders up above. They can overwhelm you pretty quickly if you ain't paying attention, so be careful. But you may also stumble upon a mush tree with cool looking webs all up on it, with even more web on the ground near it. This is the one other way these spiders spawn and they will attack anyone or anything that even touch those mush trees. Quick note for you solo players out there, and don't starve if you place anything at the center of these webbings and light it on fire, you can actually destroy the spawning location. This does not work in Don't Starve Together, however. And oh yeah, the normie spiders are also around down here making it four variations of a single mob on a single map, which is pretty nuts actually. In other words, it means Weber mains can have a field day down here, and with spiders that armor up and spit it out, your new companion posse is a force to be reckoned with. So go ahead and start stuffing their faces with that monster meat. 
Your spiders will be making quick work of most anything that isn't a big bad. And with a set of rangers around, anything trying to flee in terror from you will know pain and be murdered dead so regardless. Spider Army, ho! Oh, and you can recruit white spiders too, just so you know. There will be a video that goes into more detail about them, but for now, if you have eight of them, you can place and combine them fossil fragments all into a full, potentially varied skeleton called an odd skeleton. This is super important information, but it is completely irrelevant at this moment in time. So, moving on. But well, there you have it everyone, another short and sweet guide on the mobs that call these caves home. I hope that things are starting to get a bit easier as we progress through this series of cave guides, but expect more to come anyways. Take care for now, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.